With the number of school shootings that seem to occur more frequently in today's society, it is no surprise that the shooting at an off-campus Texas A&M Commerce homecoming party did not cause more of an outrage in the community. While the college experience is supposed to be one filled with demanding professors, lots of alcohol, and partying, unfortunately, for students at A&M Commerce, they will become a witness to a very traumatic event that should not be a part of anyone's college experience. Texas A&M Commerce is a public university in Commerce, Texas, with an enrollment of over 12,000 students as of fall 2017. Located just 65 miles from Dallas, the university attracts students from the DFW Metroplex and also from smaller communities of Northeast Texas. The shooting occurred just after midnight at the party venue on U.S. Highway 380. The party was billed as a homecoming celebration for the school. However, it was hosted by a group called the Goodfellows in Commerce. The event was not sanctioned by the school, according to officials. Scheduled for the weekend of Halloween, the event would also serve as a costume party for most of the attendees. According to reports, the venue reached max occupancy early with over 750 people in attendance. However, this did not stop the venue from allowing more people in, which added to the chaos. Partygoers reported that the roads leading to the venue entrance and side streets were packed bumper to bumper with vehicles trying to park. With the majority of these vehicles parked illegally, it was a nightmare for those trying to find parking and those attempting to leave. The sheriff's office had just been notified about 30 minutes earlier about a large party and potential traffic hazard because of overflow parking at local businesses. For this reason, officers were already at the venue prior to the shooting taking place. The suspected shooter was believed to have entered the back door of the club while the officers were still in front. Based on some witness statements, the suspect appeared to be searching for one person in particular and fired at that person first. Officials at first believed the semi-automatic rifle was used in the shooting, but then determined that it was a 9mm handgun. There was some confusion at first because there were fake rifle rounds that were used as Halloween props all on the floor inside of the venue. Witnesses reported that as a gunman came in from the back of the venue shooting, people rushed to the front door and attempted to break out the windows of the venue to get to safety. Unfortunately, two people lost their lives that evening and 14 others were seriously injured. Injured people were taken to hospitals in Greenville, Commerce, Plano, Rowlett, and some of the people had to be flown by helicopter from the scene of the shooting. The two people that lost their lives were Kevin Berry and Byron Craven Jr. No suspect was apprehended that night, and police would go on record stating that there was an unwillingness to cooperate by witnesses of the shooting. Hunt County Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy Buddy Oxford told reporters that officials were not getting cooperation from people that were attending the party. Hunt County Sheriff Randy Meeks echoed that same statement during a news conference, saying it was appalling to him that with so many people there, nobody was able to give a good description of the shooter. While there was law enforcement at the scene prior to the shooting occurring, they were not able to do much with the large crowd of people frantically running for their lives. The number of people there and the overcrowdedness nature of the event gave the shooter the opportunity to accomplish whatever he wanted to accomplish, Meeks would say. Unfortunately, there were no surveillance cameras at the party venue. On October 28th, Hunt County officials would arrest 23-year-old Brandon Gonzalez on a capital murder charge of multiple persons. At Gonzalez's first court appearance on October 30th, Sergeant Jeff Haynes of the Hunt County Sheriff's Office said officials were 100% without a doubt certain that Gonzalez was the shooter. We're confident in the investigation that was conducted by our investigators, Texas Rangers and the Department of Public Safety Criminal Investigation Division, and we believe that we have the right person, Haynes would say. However, as it turns out, they were wrong. Days later, Gonzalez would be released with the following statement being made by officials. The Hunt County Sheriff's Office is currently investigating the shooting that occurred on October 27, 2019 at the party venue on U.S. Highway 380. On October 28, 2019, Brandon Gonzalez was arrested in connection to the shooting. The probable cause arrest was based on credible information and statements given to law enforcement. Law enforcement has diligently investigated this case and in the days since the arrest, additional information has come to light. Due to the lack of cooperation from witnesses and discovery of exculpatory evidence during the course of the investigation,
We have requested that the Hunt County District Attorney's Office take no action on Mr. Gonzalez at this time and that he should be released from custody. We will continue our investigative efforts into the shooting. We know there are many people who were present at the party venue on Sunday, October 27th, 2019, who have not spoken with law enforcement. Though individuals may have reasons for not wishing to come forward, we ask that they do so until law enforcement what you saw and heard that night, no matter how small the information may be. They may not know the importance of any information they have. If you were present at the party venue or have any information regarding this case, please contact the Hunt County Sheriff's Office. Gonzalez has filed a lawsuit against the Hunt County Sheriff's Office, the Texas Rangers, and several members of local and state law enforcement. The suit claims the offenses against the 23-year-old include false arrest, false imprisonment, malicious prosecution, abuse of process, and intentional infliction of emotional distress.